and welcome to vlogmas day 10 um, and happy hanukkah to those of you who celebrate i've kind of lost track of which day of hanukkah it is but i know it is still going on um the weather outside is really gray and like there's very little natural light so i didn't and i've been up since 4 a.m so you are getting another collection video um i am filming my oxford world classics today um these are quote unquote my ugliest books. Um, I do get some comments when I talk about like pretty editions that like, oh you only care about how, you know, pretty a book is. And like, really? Really? This is what you're gonna complain about? That I, I like a certain aesthetic in my books? Okay. Um, but yes, these are these are my ugliest books. Um, they, I actually really like them though, when they're like all together on a shelf. I have these all grouped in a cube on my Expedit bookshelf, which I am not super fond of my Expedit bookshelf, but I cannot wait until I move. I can get like a regular regular bookshelf. The cubes are not doing it for me. Um, but yes, so onwards with the Oxford Book Classics. I'm going to start with what I am currently reading, which is Maria Edgeworth's Belinda. Um, this was recommended by Ron over at Ron Lit in her If You Like Jane Austen uh, video. So it's... <sighs> It's pretty fantastic. It was written in 1801. Um, it tells us, like, it's a young girl coming of age in society. However, it's one of the first classics to deal with the question of, like, mixed race marriages, which I think is really interesting. Um, I'm only about, like, 100 pages in or so, um, but I'm really enjoying it so far. She recommended two other books, which are in here, and I've already read, so I'll get to those ill in good time. Next up is a piece of Irish nationalist literature by Sidney Owenson or Lady Morgan and it is called The Wild Irish Girl. Um, this is an epistolary novel and basically tells of a young English lord who goes to his Irish estates and falls in love with the Irish people. Um, I read this in the summer. I was stuck for things to read and it was an Oxford World Classic and I was at the used bookstore and so I picked it up because I had no Wi-Fi and all I did was read <laughs> when I was in Toronto for two straight weeks. I read 19 books in a week guys. Uh, next up is one I haven't read completely, but I've read large chunks of, and that is Ovid's Fasti, which is a new translation by Anne and Peter Wiseman. Um, I got this for a Roman religion course. Uh, the Fasti is basically a calendar, um, so it goes through like all the religious rites. Um, so I've read chunks of this, but it's not something that you really read in its entirety, but um, I do dip in and out of it every so often. Um, yes. Next up is one I haven't finished. But I'm planning on reading in the new year, um, and that is Charlotte Lennox's The Female Quixote. Fun story about this. So I was reading this for an 18th century novel class, which was an online class. I took it for fun. I thought, 18th century novels, right up my alley. This was on it. Um, the professor would basically do something similar to this, except for it would be like his Word document, so he'd be talking over like his typing. And he had the most monotone voice ever, and I could have dealt with that. Except at one point, because he wasn't really technologically savvy, he went and answered the phone in the middle of a lecture, like, and like just left the recording and didn't edit it out. Just, and you could hear him like mumbling in the background on the phone. So at that point, I like decided to drop the course because I couldn't take it anymore. Um, but yes, I got a good chunk of the way through it, but because I was bogged down with other reading, I never finished it, though I was really enjoying it. Um, so I'm planning on reading this in January because I do want to get to it. Next up is Horace Walpole's The Castle of Otranto. I read this for a fantasy lit course. This is the first gothic novel. I think it like invented the genre. It's a bit weird. It's got like invisible giants in it. I don't know, not my favorite. A little bit of incest in there as well. So, you know, as one does. Next up, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this name, um, but it is Les Liaisons de Giroux, um, translated by Douglas Parme. Fantastic epistolary novel, basically horrible people doing horrible things, and uh, just absolutely fantastic. If you've seen the movie Cruel Intentions, this is what Cruel Intentions is based on. Also another one of my Toronto reads. Next up is one of Jen Campbell's favorite books, though I'm sorry Jen, not one of mine, and that is Lewis Carroll's Alice Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. Um, I read this for two fantasy lit classes, so I ended up getting the Oxford edition even though I have another edition, um, but I needed to study it, so I picked up the Oxfords. Um, I really like the Oxfords for studying. If you're new to classics, uh, the Oxford Book Classic or the Penguin Black Signs are generally your best bet. They have a lot of notes, a lot of further reading, um, generally pretty fantastic. 
Next up is one of the other books that Ron recommended in that video, and that is Elizabeth Inchbald's A Simple Story. I actually picked this up, not realizing that she had recommended it, because it was just, it was in that used bookstore, it was an Oxford World Classic, it was written by a female author, so I grabbed it. Fantastic story, um, very, very interesting. Um, first part is told from the perspective of the mother, second part is told from the perspective of the daughter. Um, really, really enjoy it. Um, definitely would recommend it. I don't want to give too much away, but yes. Next up is one I haven't read, but was recommended to me by Jean. Um, and well, she recommended everybody this, um, but it is Greek Lyric Poetry, a new translation by M.L. West. Um, so I'm looking forward to diving in and out of this in the new year. Uh, next up is one I haven't read, and that is Thomas Hardy's Wessex Tales. I'm working my way through Thomas Hardy's bibliography. Um, so this is one of them. I picked this up when I was in Toronto and then didn't get around to it. This is one of the only books that I bought that I didn't actually read when I was there. So yes, I'm looking forward to, to getting to this um, as I work my way through Thomas Hardy's complete works. Next up is Emile Zola's uh, The Fortune of the Rougon. It's a new translation by Brian Nelson. Another reason to like uh, Oxford World Classics is they generally do fairly solid translations. Um, I started reading this, I got a little bit of the way into it, but I ended up setting it aside. I don't know, I just wasn't in the mood for it, though I was enjoying it. I like Zola's writing. Um, this is the first of like this 20 book series that Zola has. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work my way through this, but I needed a break from it at the time. Next up is Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. Um, I think I've only read the Lilliputian Adventures, where the people are really small. I read this for a fantasy lit class, um, though I will read the other ones at some point. So this is really, really interesting. It's a Manipian um, satire, um, so you need to like read the notes a lot. So I, if you're going to read Gulliver's Travels, get one with really good notes to understand all of the humor. Next up is a book I actually hate, um, and I kind of want to get off my shelves because it's super racist and super misogynistic, and that is H. Ryder Haggard's King Solomon's Mines. Um, yeah, I read this for a fantasy lit class. It was required reading. I hated it. I ripped it apart in class and ripped it apart in tutorial. I continue to rip it apart because it is just absolutely racist. Um, but the only reason I would recommend reading this and that is if you want to read all of the classics that are mentioned in um, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, this is Alan Quartermain's book. So read this if you want to do that, otherwise avoid it. Avoid it, it is awful. Um, this is one that I've partially read, but it's short story, so I'm dipping in and out of that, and that is Kate Chopin's The Awakening and other stories. I read like the first four stories. Um, I did a review of this in my November reviews, so if you want to hear about that, it is in there. Um, really enjoying her writing, but short stories. I, I don't like reading a lot of like one author's work at the same time, so I'm kind of splitting it up a little bit. Next up is Bram Stoker's Dracula. As you can tell, it cost me $4.99 and I got it from BMV. Um, I haven't read this yet. I'm kind of leery about Stoker, so we will see. We will see. I... I will read this at some point, but I just have this Oxford World Classics edition on my shelf. Next up is Frances Burney's Evelina. Um, I read this last month. Absolutely loved it. Epistolary novel. The third book that uh, Ron recommended if you like Jane Austen. Highly, highly recommend it. It's absolutely amazing. Hilarious. Like, literally, I was laughing out loud with, like, tears running down my face. That is how funny this book is. Uh, next up is Mary Shelley's The Last Man. This is a post-apocalyptic novel. Um, Mary Shelley invented the genre as she so often does. Um, yeah, it's... I haven't read it yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. I picked this up when I had like $10 off on an order from Amazon. So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to digging into that. Next up is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, which I have read. Um, I own three editions of this, weirdly. I was studying this in both of my fantasy lit courses, so I decided in both courses required this edition, so I picked it up. Some classic lit now. Um, we have Apuleius's The Golden Ass with a new translation by P.J. Walsh. This is really funny. Um, I needed this for my 
Roman religion class because um, this deals with the cult of Isis. Uh, basically, Apuleius gets turned into a donkey and to get turned back he has to be indoctrinated into the cult of Isis. Um, so we were researching like mystery cults. So this is a good primary source for that but it's also just a hilarious story. So definitely recommend that. Next up is Apollonius of Rhodes, Jason and the Golden Fleece, or the Argonautica, um, a new translation by Richard Hunter. I have two copies of this. Um, this is the one that I've read. It's, yeah, I am not a huge fan of the Argonautica. It's kind of misogynistic. I much prefer, especially because I studied this at the same time I was reading uh, Euripides Medea. Um, Euripides Medea just has so much more to it. It's just so wonderful, and this is just kind of like Jason takes all the credit and Medea does all the work. It's basically how it sums this up. But it's an epic poem, but it kind of like questions epic poems, and Jason is definitely a, kind of an anti hero almost. So it's interesting. The last classic lit one. for and wrote a paper on for. Um, yeah, it's it's like, if you're new to Greek myths, check this out. Otherwise, like, I don't know. It's all right. It's... I don't know if I would recommend this one. Like, it's, it's one of those ones that's like, yeah, read it if you're really, really interested. But if you're not, you're not missing much. Um, yeah, it, it's basically just literally a collection of Greek myths. And they're kind of contradictory and like, yeah. That's, I read a lot of stuff like this in classics um, that's like you don't necessarily read unless you take classics. And the last one is actually an old style Oxford World Classics, which <laughs> I hate the old style. I like the new ones. Um, I'm actually tempted to replace this because I really want to read this. And this is Anne Radcliffe's The Mysteries of Udolpho, which I have planned to read in January because it's been on my shelf for ages. So yes, those are my Oxford World Classics. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys tomorrow with another video and hope you guys are enjoying Vlogmas so far. We're like almost halfway through, so great. It's great, I'm really enjoying this.